going to be seminar presentation examining the effects of the 9 11 terrorist attacks on Nolan Kinder, this is Christian Cerny, and this is Logan Chamber. So, for our research, we wanted to focus on like the after effects of the attacks because most people, when they look at 9 11, they just think of the day. And we wanted to actually like look at effects further because you can't have effects without a cause. And whenever the cause is as great as a day such as 9 11, the effects are increased exponentially. And the biggest cause that was caught, effect that was caused from this was on the American minds, and they lost a sense of security. And due to this sense of security, the government felt it was their job to bring it back to them, so they enacted numerous pieces of legislation. And this legislation, in turn, led to advancements in technology. I examined the social effects, and there were numerous social effects caused by 9-11. It not only affected people in New York, it really did affect the whole country. So it was a really widespread thing across the whole country and a big effect. <coughs> uh, one thing that was majorly affected was the sense of security at 9-11. Uh, many people after the attacks lost their ability to feel safe and reacted because of it. Um, an attack of this magnitude obviously affects people in a major way. Uh, one thing that we used to really unite our paper was Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow was a psychologist, so it doesn't seem to fit the social lens, but it really did. So what you have is his hierarchy right here. And on the bottom, he has your basic needs, which are food, water, shelter, and then you have safety. Every person has to fill the bottom layers before succeeding the top layers, which is self-actualization, which is really the best a person can be. And that's something you learn in the deep inside. So without succeeding these bottom layers, you can't fulfill the top layers. So when Americans had their ability to feel safe taken away, they had to restart. And another thing that was effective from 9-11 was the social contract. A social contract is an agreement among the people and government to have rights taken away in order to feel safe. So you have more rights taken away, you feel safe, basically. So what it is is, oh, I can't kill someone. That should be my right. No. So they take the right of you killing someone away in order to make the general public feel safe. So they removed more rights in order to make the general public feel safe. Um, my part of the project was the political actions taken by the government. Uh, mainly when people think of 9-11 and politics, they think of our worldly affairs and how our reactions are with the Middle East. However, I thought that that was too controversial of a topic. So what I really focused on was the safety and sense of security of the Americans and how that changed through the legislature. One of the main uh, departments that were created following the attacks was the Department of Homeland Security. And on the website it says, the Department of Homeland Security has a vital mission to secure the nation from the many threats we face. And so there are five uh, security missions, and two of the most important ones that really affect with the everyone in the nation, not just the people from New York, were the enhancing security, and that was basically just setting up more lock systems, uh, transportation security, stuff like that. And another one was our borders, and we became more stricter on immigration. One of the main pieces of legislation that was enacted was the USA Patriot Act. And that's an acronym for the Uniting and Strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. And that was signed into effect by President Bush on October 26, 2001. You can see that he is signing it in that photo over there. And the act basically just gave the government access to more knowledge through telephone calls, emails, stuff like that. Um, the approval of the USA Patriot Act was pretty good at the time that, was, that it was enacted. However, over time, Americans thought that it was doing more, more harm than good. 
because more of their rights were infringed and they didn't get as much safety control. They didn't feel as safe because of that. For the people who were responsible for all acts of terrorism, uh, President Bush, he ordered that all foreigners charged with terrorism should be treated as enemy com combatants, and that's how they would be classified. And that's different than a detainee of war because it applies and allows more, co more coercive techniques and interrogation methods so we can receive more information as a preemptive strike against terror. So all of these political actions, they created legislation, and one of the biggest pieces of legislation that affected technology was the Aviation Transportation Security Act, or the ATS. And this ATS Act created the TSA, the Transportation Security Association. And by doing this, they kind of took over all the areas and they wanted to improve them. And they improved two main areas, airport security and biometrics, for use for identity. And the first thing they did was they wanted to improve their screeners of who was letting people in what bags. So they nearly tripled the size of the screeners they had by the end of 2002. And then to ensure that they also had quality and quantity, they required more than 100 hours of training, which before they only required about 12 hours. Next thing was the technology. They created two main machines to help improve them. The explosion detector system up there on the right is about the size of a car. It can uh, process about 150 bags an hour and can identify a false positive identification about 30% of the bags. Then the other one is the ETB, which is right over here. And as you can see, it's much smaller. And it's actually more labor intensive because the screener has to place a swab in each one to get the identification. And by the end of 2003, 90% of all airports were using one of these two. And then the next area was the biometrics. It's the methods of recognizing someone based on biological and behavioral methods. And the first one was facial recognition, which is actually people use this a lot as how we determine who someone is. And they determine it by like analyzing the features of the face that can't be altered, like the upper sockets of the face or the cheekbones. And once it verifies that the person exists, it makes sure that they check the watch list and make sure that they don't pose a threat. And then the other area is finger identification and is one of the best known and widely used technologies. And it uh, uses the unique ridges and formations on your fingers to identify a person. They use two main ones, the flat and the rolled. And once it is obtained, it's the same as the facial. They verify the person exists and see if it's under a duplicate identity or false identity. And I mean, once 9-11 occurred, it was such a tragedy. And days after the attack started, and it kind of just spiraled from there. I mean, Americans instantly lost their sense of security. And this loss in the sense of security caused the government to react to or restore this. And by them restoring it, obviously people lost some rights, but it also caused the area of technology to be advanced to help us with safety. Okay, thank you. So what I'm gonna do is I just have a few questions. I'll ask them as I explain, and any of you can answer. You can consult with each other if you need to. Um, by the end of it, everybody has to answer well, okay? Um, so, first one, can we kind of specify and elaborate a little bit on that hierarchy of needs? Um, you mentioned when safety kind of gets removed, everything else, uh, which makes sense, but can you specify maybe how some of those other needs weren't met because of safety? Um, what it is is any need in the hierarchy of needs has to be fulfilled in order, so you have to have your basic survival needs to move on to the next. So, it's, I get my basic survival needs, then I find a way to feel safe. Then I try to fulfill my love and belonging. Then I try to feel good about myself, which is the esteem. And then after that, you try to get self-actualization, which is really being the best person you can be. After that, there's another one, which is self-transcendence, which we didn't reflect upon in this one because it's not in the scope of the paper. But Whenever one is removed, you have to go back and try to achieve that in order to fulfill the other. And so how did, just to elaborate that on the 9-11 part of it, how did, let's connect that, how did 9-11, like the safety derail everything else? So if a major event removes your ability to feel safe, you will also 
remove your ability to feel good about yourself or feel loved. It's you have to have one to have the others. And did your research find that lead you to any specific examples of that? It did not as well as I wish it would. Okay. Thank you. Um, should we assess? Um, so we talked about some decisions, right? Some legal decisions, right? That was Christian's part. Um, did you assess any of those decisions through some multiple perspectives? You know, like I know you talked a lot about the Patriot Act. Can we see that through a lot of different angles? Um, yes, because you could see how uh, obviously the government thought that it was good. However, the citizens felt it was good. And they did feel uh, usually the same, which might be um, a bit of the same perspective. But I said that uh, as time progressed, then the uh, Americans did feel as safe. They felt that their freedoms were also being impeached, and with their freedoms also being impeached. So mainly I was just trying to hit multiple perspectives with that one from what was happening in the Okay, great, thank you. Um, and we, can we talk, we talked about technology at the end. Um, was there any, did your research find um, any controversy with some of these technologies? And if so, what types of sources helped inform that? Um, I didn't look at a lot of sources actually, because the source I found, they had some different information on what they were used for and like kind of the technology, which is weird. Like some of the, I had to check all the sources to make sure they didn't contradict each other. And then once I got